family. So I hope everyone's having a fantastic Tuesday. Uh, okay, so today we're going to be talking about... I can't hear you. Okay, can you can't? Can you hear I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, just in case no one heard me, we're going to be talking about Gloom's fight today. Uh, and before we get into that, we're going to get into some news, because today they have shown off my favourite army, some new Selenesh models. What do, you, what do you think about the new models coming out? Uh, they look alright. I like the theme they've gone from. Uh, gone for even, with kind of the carnival silks and what have you. I was planning on picking up a set of the Diacasm ones, because I had an idea to use them as performers for... A little encounter I was going to run in AOS for a narrative event. Okay, yeah, I've picked up Dodge uh, Chasm myself because I wanted the new Slash models. Mm. I had a feeling they were going to come, so for me, they're going to be tester models. Mm. To try out 100%. Um, I think that's worth doing before sinking money into it. I really like the fact that we've now got Slangors. Mm. Um, so is is maybe I think it's it's gonna get set up so Nurgle gets an update and gets some gores because we've got Zan gores, we've got Slan gores, Pesta gores did exist and Corn gores did exist. If anything, Slan gores and Zan gores were the ones which didn't exist prior to West. Uh, well, model wise they didn't exist, but law wise they did. Yeah, they did. They just never had uh, mod models. I think even in the old kind of Rogue Trader. Slaves to Darkness era, they didn't really have models. Well, Korngor and Pestigors did, and then they got updated in Sick Fed when Beasts of Chaos were split from Warriors of Chaos and got actual models. Yeah, uh, so I think they're really nice models. The new Seekers, I think that was a bit of a, not a shocker, because the kit's quite old, and the mortals on top, for me, yeah, they're okay. Uh, I like the archers shooting in a Celeste army. That's gonna be weird, right? Mm. Celeste shooting in a chaos, shooting in a chaos army in general is weird. Apart from beastmen raiders, I think there's no and real Zinch. actual range Zinch. unit in the in the game. For chaos. No, no, Zinch, Zangors on the Skyfire discs. True, true, but they're not exactly a big bulky unit, are they? They're, no, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent, you're hundred percent right. But we do have it, and they are good. Mm. Um, but they were over P P P P like overpowered so much. It was like overpower, power, 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 power. Like it was like that Dragon Ball Z moment. It's over nine thousand. Um, uh, that's early Zinchly in one point yeah. Happy yeah. days. I mean, I played against that list like ten times, and everyone just had Skyfires, and I just lost every time. So like, oh, we're no shooting. Good luck. Um, so no, we got those, which I thought was quite nice. I don't expect them to do much, but. It's, it's nice to have that play option because what I've heard, I can neither confirm or deny this, but Slanesh is going to get a deep strike option. That <laughs> ah, wouldn't surprise me, to be honest with you. Um, hence, Shadow and Pain. I mean, pretty sure Shadow refers to Marathi selves, doesn't it? from the shadow think. realm that's what you would think because where where's Slanesh being hidden at the moment um in the special special place surrounded by the candy obelisks which are crushing down and one of them has grom the paunch in that's where he ends up after fantasy that was what we all had cannoned last week when we played D&D because it's more interesting than Slanesh well, no, because no, Selenesh is in between <laughs> Rob Ish and Shadow. Yeah. So he that's, sits in that's... an equidistal distance in his own yeah. plane. Yeah, he's in between the Shadow Realm and the Light Realm. So what a better way to be like, okay, because of that, and Selenesh has broken more chains, and the mortals are now really pushing to free him slash her. Um, here, here's some deep striking options. They, them. They, them. 
Yes, sorry, I, I, I do apologise for the wrong pronouns as well there. That was no offence intended. Uh, but I think that's pretty exciting news. So let's get into what we're here for, which our viewers are here for. We should talk about Gloomspire. And as we said previously, we're going to talk about the squig side of things and the grots rather than the spider fang, the trolls. Because this book, you've, you've got the book, you've played the book, it's pretty hefty, right? I'd say it's it... Stormcast hefty. No, it's not that. It's not that chunky. It's one of the larger books. Um, it is quite a chunky army. Uh, there's three, three sub factions within the book itself uh, for the like the Bad Moon. Plus, with the White Dwarfs, which are coming out, that's adding another three sub uh, three sub factions, two that's sub factions just... even. No, three. Three. No, three. There's three. Yeah. There's, there's one for pure squigs. That was the first one. The second <laughs> one, if I remember correctly, um, was Trolls. 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 And, then, and the third one is going to be Spider Fang. Yes, which is coming out this month. 16th, 16th of December or 18th of December, yeah. one of the two. And hopefully, uh, afterwards, we'll get a Gits one as well. Gits. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Do they need it, really, Gits? Because the book, I'm, it does favour them in large bulk. What we're gonna get into I'm the seeing stuff. the White Dwarfs as soft updates to the book, which the best of will then be rolled in when they get their new book out. That's what I'm guessing. Because I, they have sunk down in power over the last year or so quite a bit. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean... The one thing, actually, do you know what? I'm going to get a model out for you. So excuse me for coming so close to the camera. My cabinet's right here. One models, one model uh, range that they released, and he needs to get painted. I don't know if you can see this, but... Uh, yeah, the scuttle the tide spot, models. Yeah, the silver tower models, man. Like, these were yeah. beautiful things. And they never got rules. Yeah. I Which use them as really strange. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people use them as alternatives. Um... But you know he needs to get painted amongst the other stuff and just quickly changing something. Talking about Silver Tower, actually, I finally got round to this dude uh, and got him painted. So um, it's taken you four years. Uh, yeah, four years. It's that bad. Uh, four years. <laughs> it's all. But it it was just strange to me that in the Silver Tower they gave us this beautiful set of models. Mm. And mm. You would say ninety percent got rules. The ten percent being the two elves, they didn't get rules. The, oh, they did, uh, and they got rid of them. Well, no, but they've got, like, the, there is no proper rule faction for them. We don't know where they yeah. sit. Yeah. The goblins, they didn't get rules. Um, And then, uh, if I believe correctly, that's it, really, isn't it? Because yeah, everything else was passed in. Karakak Lights got rules. Gaunt Summoner got rules. The Night Questor got rules. And the other pre-existing models got rules. So those three think... models... And not uh, the war priest as well got pulled out of Cities of Sigma. Uh, no, no, I think I he's think he, I think he got pulled out of it because I don't think they make the model yeah. anymore. I, actually, I remember I, think I sold one a while back for a decent amount of money. Yeah, which was like OOP money rather than brand new money. Yeah, well, this is what I was about to say because um, there's I think about four models in the range. Um, mm. So, yeah, it was strange. That, but going back onto those guys, I'm just very surprised that they never went into Spider Fang. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the perfect they're, bridging one for Gloom Spikes. Uh, yeah, I think if they had a deep strike rule, they would be quite fun to play with for Spider Fang mm. players. Battle line, it gives that effect that there's Spider Goblins and stuff like that. But going off track, let's get back to what we are going to talk about. Uh, and we're going to start where we started last week. Allegiance abilities. I always find the allegiance abilities the most interesting. So this is your army. So this is your time to shine. What can you tell me about the allegiance abilities? Well, they're brilliant, but they're also awful. Um, <laughs> so, well, it's true, isn't it? When I play Goon Spites, I assume I'm never going to have my allegiance abilities. And I play it as a vanilla army with only what's on the war scroll and interactions between the units. Um, because the bad moon moves across the board each turn, you're only really guaranteed about two, maybe two turns worth, because you can double move the moon, or the moon can't move. It gets it gets finicky. Uh, the Legion's ability itself, which you get from it, are quite nice. 
Uh, the ability to generate additional command points if your general is affected by the light of the moon. That's mm -hmm. quality, especially in a Gits heavy army, because you want both CP to be popping inspiring presence. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the casting and, de and the spelling debuff, which mm -hmm. is essentially your wizards, which get affected by it, get bonuses to cast and dispel. Enemy wizards get mo uh, modifiers to cast uh, and dispel which has swung me games before. Um, Scarred You're, Rock, in particular, yeah, who's got... I was, before you go on to that point, I was about what I was wanting to say about your magic. You're very one of two ways. You're either amazing or you really suck. And I think yes. that's the fun part yes. of your book. Like, and that's yes. a great part of the Allegiance ability. It makes that what I like to call um, fun hammer experience because it's the chance. And that's hmm. something... You know, I, don't, I think a lot of players need to remember is you do with the Gloom Spark Gift, the mechanics are there to play what I call Fun Hammer and have just a fun game because it can go one or two ways. But sorry, it's, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, I, I think in, in addition to that with the magic, their magic law is either utility. There's three good spells in it. The rest of it's awful. And then you're just kind of sat there with it. Um, they're an army which favours just blowing people up with endless spells more than their own law. There's only two spells which I will pretty much auto include in my army, and one of those spells I won't if I'm running squig uh, if I'm not running squigs. So yeah, and then you'll say you're going on to uh, the other ability, Legion's ability, mm. Stewart uh, Skagrot. In uh, Skagrot, his bonus to cast built in is already a plus one. If you get him next to something mystical, uh, arcane even that's plus two. The light, the bad moon, plus three. It's very hard to outcast him. Or turn his magic off when he's at that point. I think even a Lord of Change will struggle because if mm. you if you roll well, let's say you roll a ten, and you've got that plus three bonus, that's thirteen. Even turning, you know, double sixes aren't going to do anything. It's and they're going to be at minus one. Yeah, potentially from the like the bad moon. Yeah, so that's another allegiance ability from the light of the bad moon minus one. Yes. Yeah, yes, that's okay. part of the buff casting. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm getting notifications left, right, and center here on the <laughs> Warhammer chat. Do apologize, guys. Um, just all we all, I'm always getting in, new info coming in, so I apologize about the hand coming in there. Uh, so sorry, yep. Yeah. And so, what's the other legion's abilities for the Bloom Spike Gits when we're looking at uh, the Grots and so, so Grots and Squigs? Grots are quite an easy one if we're affected by the light, the bad moon. They can reroll ones when it comes to wounding. Mm -hmm. Ones to wound or ones to hit. I think it hits. It's been so long since I've played a game. I can't As remember. It, we've been in lockdown, Hammer. I mean, all I've been doing is playing. Reroll hits of one. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, and for... then squigs. Yeah. that's for Grots, which are affected by the light, the bad moon. Mm -hmm. And then the squigs themselves, they can run and charge. Which is like, yeah, it's decent. Yeah. But there's a spell which allows you to do the same thing, which casts on the five. Oh, and finally, the moon itself, every time oh. you move it, you can choose an enemy unit, takes deep in mortal wounds if you roll under the number of models in the unit, yeah. which is chip damage at the end of the day. That feels like it's been added on because they've kind of, they've written out your allegiance abilities and gone, none of this is substantial. <laughs> So I disagree. I really disagree. I think Gloom Spite, they're, they're quite an underrated army. And I believe it was J.P. Stevens, I want to say, uh, who does um, the podcast. Uh, I can't remember the podcast. It's just something. Just play? Just, just play. play. Yeah, just play. Um, and he made a list of Gloom Spite because they were pretty laughed at when the book came out. Everyone was like, this, this book doesn't make sense. This book is... Three armies just thrown together as one. It's basically a grand alliance for, for goblins. It's okay. And then he brought out the list that Goblin we're going to get into. Yeah, yeah well, you're, we're going to get into. And everyone then just sort of went, oh, my God, this is disgusting. You can't really beat it unless you're a good player. And that was because he read the book and he worked out the different combinations and X, Y, and Z and what those allegiance abilities allows you to do. And I like that. When I look at certain allegiance abilities, like the Eisen F. Deepkin, for me, it's a get out of jail free card for Eisen F. You know, okay, well, you can only shoot the nearest unit and you also get the abilities of the tides. So, you know, you can 
being cover and this and that, it, it should get out of free card. Where when you get pick up a certain book, Bone Reapers as an example, you don't get command points. Instead, you get the um, tax points. Yeah, I call them the tax man points. So you have to be good with that. And if you're a good player, you know, you'll do well with it. But if you're just a casual player, you want a fun game, you won't get that Bone Reapers. You, you just don't get that experience for me because I mm. think you can go horribly wrong. But with Gloom Spite, you get that experience and you just have a good giggle. And I think when you look at Warhammer TV, what's the one army we continuously see on there with this two friends playing? It's Gloom Spite. Um, so I think it, it is, it's, uh, it's one of those books that people, again, like we said last week, Nighthorn, they just brush, brush past it. They, mm. they just want something that's going to go and smash, but they don't think about the pure resilience. Mm. how fun a book can be um and i've you know i've been looking at some gloom spite stuff and thinking do you know what i wouldn't mind making a little 2000 point troll army myself because i think the models are wicked that's what i'm working on at the moment yeah and it's low low model count it's just a bit of fun and you can have a giggle with it so then moving on from that um we're going to take this in a little bit different direction obviously after you know when we were talking about night hole we went from allegiance to then what the, you know what's the best thing for Nighthorn and do they need Nagash and stuff like that we're not going to do that with this one I think we're going to look at what really matters for um, Gloom Spite and that is what are they actually lacking as an army because I don't feel like it gets touched upon enough with Gloom Spite because how many War Scrolls there is and I do feel like they're missing a lot not entirely sure on that I feel very much a toolbox army there's certain aspects which I'd agree on for, I think they're missing maybe two things. Maybe two. Nah. Nah. I feel like they're missing five units. Uh, honestly. And I'll explain why I feel like they're missing the five units. So, I don't feel like, apart if you take the squigs out of this whole equation, even though we're covering them, Gloom Spike themselves don't really have anything that allows them to just get across the board quickly. Now, you rely on the magic to do that. If you've got a big horde of, of gits, you know, they're going to get across. Now, they're goblins. Now, I understand goblins are tiny, but I also expect there to be a couple of medium-height goblins that mm. can be a bit quicker and be a bit more elite because they've got a little bit more intelligence. So I'd expect maybe a unit with armor. This just in, the higher the IQ, the faster you can run. Yeah, right? Because that's... <laughs> think they don't really think of like anything else right that's why they tame squigs no one else does that not even orcs orcs are like we'll ride a pig but we won't ride that thing because it could eat us but goblins are stupid that way and that's what makes them fun but i feel like they should have a, a unit that could maybe move six inches and have a four plus save and be really bad at attacking because they're wearing heavy armor mm. Does that make sense? Yes, essentially Yes, but just on foot, though. I yeah, that's it... what I mean. Just on foot, heavy armoured goblins. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's like one unit. Second, like, again, they have all the squigs. If you take them out, there's no other real monsters in that army. You know, if you're going to play a troll army, you're playing the trolls. But you don't mm. have that. And uh, this is where I feel like um, troll hags could work instead of like a, a crossbreed troll. That makes sense. Or a goblin troll or something like that. Something a bit different, uh, you know, I think that's for Games Workshop to imagine up and, and think of a monster that can just sort of go out apart from the squig. Because squigs can die very quickly. Their they save's not great. No, six up usually. Yeah. And goblins are underneath caves. I'm sure there's some wonderful creatures down there that they could also take. You've only got to look at what the uh, Dan Cold Trog boss is carrying, the giant centipede. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, there you go. So, so do you know what I mean? So, like, that's the second thing. Then my third thing is their heroes. You know, it's, this is a common theme with the lower tier armies, that, well, lower tier, what people will say, but is their heroes. You have three or four that you auto include and the rest you forget about. Yep. <laughs> and stop with me. I don't, I don't like that. When I play Slanesh, I will look at my book and I'll say, I'm taking the Keeper of Secrets, but now my, now my problem comes in is after that auto-include, because I've got so much Ferrari. Well, I could take Celeste, and he can do this for my army. I could take the Mask, that could do that. I can take the Vice Leader, it could do that. Or I could take the Epitome and the Enraptured, could do that. So I have variety 
where it all just synergizes perfectly. Gloom Spike don't have that. And I think that's an issue. So that's my third unit. My fourth unit, I think they should have something that flies. They, you know, we're hearing in the law there's pirates. Goblin pirates, <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see a pirate in a in a bodged up wooden plane going to fight some Kurdian overlords, bro. That would be wicked. That would be amazing. I mean, technically, quite a lot of squigs have the fly keyword. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like, for, for, for the, the actual git side, I think, you I know, know, we're hearing it. Let's just have them in planes. Really yeah. bad. Yeah. They could do something stupid, like blow up and do like D3 mortal wounds for each unit within three, friendly or not. I think it's another fun aspect to it. And then for the final one, um, and this is where, again, I like to bring up controversy. I, I honestly feel like, do you know in Lord of the Rings, you've got like yeah. your orcs and your goblins, yeah. and you've got your Urukai. Yeah. An Urukai sort of style unit, a crossbreed. That's mm. the heavy hitters. I mean, law wise, I'm not sure pop goblins are still a thing, but that would be kind of what would fit hobgoblins, which are like they're a bit bigger than goblins, but they're not quite orcs. Yeah, and that's but what I'm saying. You know, it's just some stupid little goblins with some armor, throw them in there. I think people start using them. And at the same time, you can get rid of some war scrolls and some mm. ranges that aren't required anymore. Um, because, and also, break up the book. No, we don't. We don't like that type of talk. We like I, the book as it is. No, but I, I personally feel like they should all be able to ally with each other. But it would be nice for all these books to be individual and, and more fleshed the, out, and fleshed out more flavor, more fun, and a whole different play experience. Mm. Because if you play a troll army, you're not winning against ogres. You don't get the benefits that ogres get because what well, ogres they count as two models, and if there's over a certain unit, if it's a monster, it counts as ten. Well, why don't trolls get that gloom spire? Mm. You know I mean, separate the books. You make those differences, and someone says, "I'm suddenly going to play that army." Yeah, it's true. So, um, so I mean, that's that's where I'm at with it. Like, what what about for you? The only kind of two things I feel they're really missing are a war machine, like something proper. Previous and previous editions, I they had spear chuckers, machine. Yeah. stuff like that. The squid gobber, it's still a thing. Yeah, but a squid gobber rework would be nice. But an actual like spear chucker, squid catapult, anything oh like God. that, doom diver, anything. And I agree. I think. I think the big problem which I have is the lack of spider fang options. Um, like they've got the arachnoroks and they've got the medium, they've got the little spiders. I think they'd really benefit from a proper infantry unit, which is just goblins with spears and bows, like they they've have got, on riders. Or well, they've, got, they've already got those molds. They've got them. All the tower. They can't. There we go. Do you know there what I mean? Like, they released that as a box, you know, and suddenly people are going to be buying them. Mm. Silver Tower for me always came out at the wrong time. It was it was the wrong time to release that game. And then they released Healing Hammer, the second edition, at the wrong time, just to try and sell it. Whereas you look at Blackstone Fortress, the market for board games at that time and it's still growing, was massive. So everyone mm. wanted a real good, sloggy ball game that you could be playing and playing and playing with add-ons. Silver Tower wasn't the right time for it. Healing Hammer wasn't the uh, right time for it. But Blackstone Fortress was. And they, well, that was when the second Warhammer quest came out, they said it would be, oh, it's going to be coming on later in the year when they announced it. And it was out about three weeks later. Mm. Well, the preview for it was like... <laughs> <laughs> and and that's my problem is with the second box set they use all pre-existing kits there was nothing really new in it mm. and when you look at that original box set we know we have these goblins and what you've just said is they've got the mold 
Mm. And they were on their own sprue. They weren't on nothing else. They had their own sprue. So that means they've got their own templates. So GW, if anyone from GW is, does watch this or is listening, re- release them. People will buy them. A box of 10 for 30 quid, people will pay for it. They're not easy to get on secondary markets now either anymore. When right. I picked them up on when I picked them up off eBay, they went for about twenty pound for eight of them, which it's a fair amount. I remember when they came out, they were selling for like six quid for eight of them, but yeah. there's just there's none left because it's a YOP. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. Um, so right, we've looked at what they need. Now, what don't they need? What would you get rid of in the in this book? But and when I say get rid of. We've got to be. We've got to tread carefully here. Personally, mm-hmm. I think squid coppers should go, or reworked, or something, because they're rubbish. Boing Grot bounders, leagues ahead of them. There's no way to point. There's no way to point them where they're going to be any anything approaching decent. I love the models. I've just built ten. There's no reason for me to ever run them. It's just squid herd, 30 points less than them, 20 points less of them, boing grot bounders, 10 points more than them. I'm always going to choose a boing grot bounder over a squid copper. They just, they just don't fit in. The only way it'd work is if squid herd were like 50 or 60 points, but then they'd be easily the best troop, one of the best troop choices in the game. It's just the with the introduction of boing grot bounders, Squid coppers just occupy this really weird space where they're just they're too expensive, they don't do enough. Okay. I mean that that for me, I think that could you know, I think that's a that that's what I'd call an unpopular opinion because I think a lot of people love squigs. And that's why they, Yeah, that's <laughs> why they released it, right? Because everyone was like, Oh yeah, we'll have a bit of this, have a bit of that. See for me, the one thing that they can get rid of and redo is the heroes. Apart from your three auto includes, mm. which is yeah. you've got uh, Scarrick, which is the, the name character, so he stays. You have who's the little guy with, um, that makes you minus to hit? Loom boss? No, the loom boss. The loom boss is the one which does mortal, gives uh, yeah. command ability, allows stabbers to do mortals. Yeah, so you keep the loom boss. There's another guy, you, you end up becoming minus four to hit once you do all the pile ups and the minuses. That is the loom boss, yeah. Yeah, so the loom <laughs> boss, so you, generally you see a loom boss, you see Scarrick, and there's another one that you always. Fungoid. Fungoid cave shamans. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So those three <laughs> heroes, you keep, right? The rest, they're dog crap. I mean, like, they're so it, bad, they're not worth even teeth in hold of. I mean, the Mangler Loon boss is brilliant, <laughs> and the Racknock Shaman is brilliant. Everything else is kind of mm, bad. Cat shamans are awful. Yeah, but this is my point, right? You've just named another two heroes there, but how many times have you run them? In, how many times have you honestly looked at? At your list and thought, I want to run those because I know I can have a wicked game. This is going to be super fun. And at the same time, they're going to really create an impact on my army. Depends on if I'm running a squig list or not. If, you're if running I'm running a squig list, then I'll be taking the squig heroes. If I'm not, I might take a Mangler Loom Boss one game in three or four if it's a friendly game. That's my point. They're just a little bit too expensive for my playstyle. But, but this is my point. They need to take... And I didn't say like completely bin them, comp- all of them. Some of them, I think they just need to be binned, the War Scrolls. Others need to be rework- reworking. You know? Mm. Especially with these White Dwarf releases. Because if you look at what they've done through the White Dwarfs, they've given you a few different battalions, a few bit of um, flavours that you can try out. But at the same time, they're not that sort of change that you, you think this is a whole new way of playing. No, no. 
is okay. just building upon the existing foundation. Yeah. So you look at what they did was, you know, I know I'm going to talk about Sinesh again, but the Celeste Coast, it mm. changed what you could play. It was all about depravity, depravity, depravity. Even though, you know, a lot of people, they want depravity points. It was a way to get even more to help you out, most probably against armies that you don't get any from. So if I'm playing you, I don't get depravity unless I'm killing heroes or monsters. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're one <laughs> If I'm playing Nighthorn, I don't get depravity because you're one wound. If I was playing Fire Slayers 1.0 version, I don't get depravity because they were one wound. Until they turned to two, they turned into like my favorite thing to play against Fire Slayers. You, they were slow. They would give out, give me plenty of depravity, and two, they would always, always just go after the Keeper of Secrets by burrowing. So they, it was like, you're going to be distracted by a big monster. I don't care. You know, it it was like the dream matchup for us. Um, but even like Ideneth, you struggle to get the private points unless there's a lot of heals on the board. And you're not seeing that anymore. Mm-hmm. Everyone runs James Tinsdale list of which, you know, I've run of Ill, uh, some heals and loads of Reavers and Thralls. And Very many math heals. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's really like, and the heroes. That's why they just need for me to be reworked, and some just completely binned and new molds needs to be made, and new models needs to be made because they've taken a lot of old kits and just put it in the book, and instead of actually giving it a rework. Yeah, well, that's that's down to how much how much of the range they've kind of crammed into it, haven't they? It was one. Of, it's it's always going to be one of those books where you were going to have a lot of old models in it because they just weren't ever going to be able to update everything they needed to in one go. And I appreciate that. But we're now talking at a point where the book's been out for, what, two years? Two years in January or February, from what I remember. So this is my point. Slanesh, they're getting a new book. Mm. It's obvious they're getting a new book because of the mortals. Even if they put it in a, um, like the Marathi soul books, eventually the in books. Well, yeah. numbers, they're going to get a whole new book, right? With Gloom Spike, we're at this point now, and I just think it's a great army, but GW's not paying destruction any love or affection. No, no, not even close. You think about it, the only... There hasn't been a whole new model range for any destruction army so far, apart from... Well, no, there hasn't. Because well, Iron Jaws had Ard Boys, which used to be Black Orcs. Black wrong. Orcs. You are wrong with what you just said. There, there has what, been what destruction army gargants um the old giant kit is in that army nice no, try no the gargants though the new gargants yeah and the mega gargants but when when you look at the other grand alliances oh there's yeah the model range there's armies in there which have completely new model ranges for everything they're brand new but destruction hasn't had that no you're right and it makes me sad it really makes me sad because i'm a lover of the hobby I don't mind losing a game of Warhammer. If I'm at a tournament and I lose, I don't, you know, I might get upset on the day, but in the long run, I don't care. I'm, I look back at it with fond memories. I look back at my time when I went to the Warhammer uh, Heat qualifiers. Okay, out of five games, three of them was against a Legion and a Gash, a Gash build lists. And then I had to play the crazy um, Corn Bloodthirster lists and a All Ill lists. By a miracle, I qualified somehow. I went three and two. But I don't look back and think, oh, did you know what? Like, Because the models were beautifully painted. The new ranges were all coming out. Everything was really good. But when I look at a destruction player, I think you get a new book every year or every two years. They're getting a new book, but they're not getting any new models. And that no, makes... I, I, Iron Jaws and Gloom Spikes are really the only true releases. Everything Bone Splitters is old. They even brought back stuff which was out of production when I was like 14. Back in a back, back back in like sick fed fantasy, which has been reissued because mm. the bone splitters range is tiny. Well, I think it some... was Wurzag or one of the foot shamans. Like one of the sh- foot shamans was old when I was a kid. <laughs> so this is my point. When we look at Gloom Spite, they need this, you know. Mm. And when we say like, what would you like to see gone? We're not saying for anyone watching this, we want it gone for good, but I think. 
what we do want is something to be taken apart and restructured into something a bit more solid for the Destruction fans and for the Gloom Spike fans and given some new fancy toys because you go to serve it, you haven't had it. I think Destruction players just don't get much love and you deserve it. Death players need to go to the back end along with Chaos players. No, honestly, Chaos and Death players, we need to go to the back end. We've had everything now, okay? If you're a Chaos lover, right, you're getting new Slanesh models, you're getting... You know, well, New Slanesh, you've had, uh, right, let's go through the list. New Slanesh, New Zinc stuff, you've had new corn stuff in the last two years, and new, and new Nurgle stuff in the last two years, okay? So the last two years have been pretty good for a Chaos player. Death players, again, they've had loads. Legions of Grief, they got new rules, then they got the Asaki Bone Reapers, that was lovely. Then they reworked Legions and the Gash, fantastic, so they got new stuff. When we then look at Alder, you've got how many Elven race, race, uh, races is there now? It's like, I can't keep up. And I love Elves. Okay, my first ever fantasy army was a Wood Elf army. But you've now mm-hmm. got Ideneth, Lumineth, Daughters of Cain. I'm waiting for something to be called Shadow Neff or something. Like, it's, they're in the Neffs of bad, right? So Alder's got a lot. Evil Neffs. Yeah. But Destruction's got nothing. They've, they've just been been left out in the cold, right? And they've gone to them. Here's a new orc book. Here's a new ogre book. Here's a goblin book. Okay, and here's a mega gargant. There's your armies. Oh, and here's a new book as well to go with the mega gargant. In two years, it's just not enough. And I, I, I just think that they need to take away some of the heroes for Gloom Spite, put those back in, and rework it. What I'm on a destruction front, what I'm hoping for is that the new AOS starter set is destruction, the Stormcast, because it's going to be Stormcast, and that it's it's just basic orcs. Like, it's the, the, when we had green skins back in AOS 1.0, it's basically just new basic orc sculpts, stuff like that, something which is missing in between blown splitters and gargants, and just generic goblins. They like, won't. I like the Wolf Riders. I know they won't, but I can, a man can dream. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, we all know why they won't do it, because of the IP. Mm. Games Workshop needs to protect the IP. So I think maybe, maybe, this is what I think we might see, is, and what I'm praying for, is Gloom Spite versus Stormcast and Pirate Goblins. I want Pirate so Goblins. Happy. I'd be so happy if it was Gloom Spite. It'd just be like Skull Path again. I'd just buy all of the boxes. Yeah. It, I mean, <laughs> it, it would be just such a, 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 a like, fresh of breath air. Because mm. we would be like, fantastic. I would be hyped for it. I'm not going to buy these models, but I would be so happy. Because one thing I love to do is when I go on my Twitter feed, right, I look at what people are painting, what people are talking about, and stuff like that. And the one complaint I always see from destruction players is when we're going to get some new models, when we're going to get some new models. And I would like to see those lovers get it. Every fan deserves his day of where he can sit there and celebrate. Oh, my God, I'm getting this. And for me, when I saw Slanesh, I, I was never a real big Slanesh fan at all. And then when I saw, I was, oh, my God, these models are beautiful. But one of uh, our friends that we both know, we're going to call him by his proper name, James, not his nickname because that's rude, his nickname, right? He went off the chain. He, I think he pre-ordered like three Keepers of Secrets. He ordered like two Epitomies, three Enraptuses. He was like, oh my God, the only thing I now need for my 40k army is some Noise Marines to come out, you know? Like a proper box, not the individual boxes. And that's what I want to see for Destruction players, because every player, as I said, deserves their day in, in the sun. So moving on to that, yeah, you, right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking about his name now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, we can't say it, um, but we are a family friendly channel, so we're not. Really, but moving on from that, we've looked at obviously what they need and what they don't need. But one thing that they have an abundance in height. Is a scenery piece. Yes, the best scenery piece in the game. Best one. 
Now I will I will agree, but there's a joint there's a joint best in the game. No there mate, there is. No, mate. No, mate. It pains me to say this, where it is. No it's, mate, it's... Wildwoods don't count. No, 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 not Wildwoods. Not having it. If you're a silver net player, on no, no, it's the tech, it's the tax collectors. Nah, that thing's rubbish. It's n- right. I'll tell you why it's not right, and we'll go back to this. We know we're creaky, we're jumping from subjects here. It's just the fact that they get to place it down before any other scenery. Yeah, that is, good. That, is good. that is literally like doesn't matter, mate. The objectives don't even go down. I put my scenery down before you put your objectives down. It, it's just like, yeah, but no, I agree. With you. It's the joint best 100%. Love the loon shrine, absolute unit that lad is. So what does it do? What does the loon try and do? Well, if you're holding within 12 of it, you ignore battle shock. <laughs> madness, man. It's madness. And what with the size of it, you can comfortably put that between two objectives on quite a few of the uh, missions and cap both objectives with it and just go, cool, that's battle shock immune. Good luck. Yeah. In addition, uh, well, when a unit of Grotz is destroyed, on a four up, you get half of them back. And that's cumulative. So that's only only one unit. Uh, a unit can only come back once. But if you don't roll that four, you roll it again next mm. turn. So you can be rolling quite a few units. And with the new updates by uh, White Dwarf, you can now bring back Boy and Grot Bounders, Trolls, Squig Hoppers. And there's nothing scarier than like, 50, you finally kill off that nice unit of 15 boy and grots and then eight of them turn back up ready to do mortal wounds and make you cry again so this is what i was going to ask you because warhammer does does turn into math hammer does the rule say you round up or uh i believe round it's round up, up. round up because yeah. technically technically if you play a trog off list mm-hmm. If a tra- uh, troll hag dies mm-hmm. because of the keywords, you can bring back a troll hag. <laughs> well, you can't bring back half a troll hag, though, right? No, nah, you round it up. Half models are rounded up. Okay. Well, I will. I will accept that because in in mathematics, if it's 0.5 or more, you always round up. If it's below a 0.5, you always will round down. So, if it's one and you've killed it, and you can only bring back half a unit, that makes it a zero point five, which means you have to round it up to one. So that's fine, and I think that's a fair rule, and I think that's okay. Um, but what's the importance of your scenery piece? It's locking down objectives. It's securing your own backfield objectives, and maybe the one closest to you. Uh, it's also excellent at blocking line of sight because it is huge. So you can quite happily put it down in front of an objective and then if you go five wide on goblins and just mm. plonk them straight down behind it, you ain't going to get seen. Mm. It's just that ability to just create bubbles on the board, which doesn't matter how many, you're going to have to kill them all to yeah. claim the objectives. And mm. with the ability, if you bring that unit back and you're near an objective, they're going straight on it, which is what I do. And pretty much every kind of player who plays uh moon clan horde does yeah no makes sense definitely makes sense so we've covered quite a bit there now i think we're gonna just we're gonna ease up on the real heavy talk now and i think the one thing that people and players love to talk about are the models themselves yeah so i want you to run down We'll start from number three. You give your third, I'll give my third, your second, my second, your first, and my first. Okay. What's your third favourite Gloom Spite model? I love Molog. Okay. Like, what? I just like the sculpt of him. He looks like he sounds in the fluff about how he's his troll, which is like being underground so long. He's part fungus. He's mm-hmm. woken up. He is angry. I love all the little critters which come with him. It, that was kind of the model which made me really want to start playing goblins again. Okay. 
So for me, I think this might actually shock you, is the Arachnid Rocks. Yeah, those are wicked models. And the reason, I've, it's quite a funny reason. And it, my, my partner, um, obviously you know her, um, so she's scared of spiders. Hey, them. Yeah. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> um, no, no, but she, she is. She's scared of spiders. And I find it funny that the fact that she looks at it and screams and runs away because she thinks it's a real spider when it's not. Uh, mm. And it's on my phone. But it's, it's not just that. What I love is the fact that it, they didn't really go with a, a realistic look of a spider. No, no. I've seen other third party companies try and make spiders and they try to make them look realistic. And I think it's such a hard job to do because how thin mm. a spider's leg is and stuff, it's fiddly work. And they took, for me, they took inspiration from Lord of the Rings. And they looked at that and went, hold up, we can also do this with them, okay? And we'll make them with a bit of a carapace around them and we'll make them a bit bulkier and stronger. And I'll tell you what, why don't we put some goblins on top? And they just really expand on, I think, on a very small idea and built and built and built. And then they ended up with this gigantic, beautiful model. And it was just like... Yeah, you can imagine that in the fantasy realm. You can imagine that crawling up a building and webbing something up and doing X, Y, and Z. And their rules play very fluffy as well. And I like that. But the and model it's also hilariously cheap. It's like 30 quid. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 30, 35 pounds. <laughs> I just had a really weird I just had a really weird um notification from James Tinsdale saying sending out Twitter webs. <laughs> Good timing. Good timing. Good timing there, James. Um, okay, so what would be your second model? Boy Grot Bounders. Absolutely love them. I think they look like they're some they look like squeak hoppers, except they're out of labyrinth. Wicked bodies. <laughs> yeah. Um I no, I definitely get that one. My second are the Trogos. Mm. I mean what I'm seeing people do on Twitter right now. It's just wow. Like I think one of our friends, Lee, he sent a message in the Warhammer chat and this guy or lady, I'm not even sure who painted it, like it was just this this troll, the detail of the skin, everything. It was just and their sculpt is so beautiful. Mm. And I remember watching a Warhammer uh T V episode of where it was Gloom Spike versus uh the New Slaves of Darkness book and it was two friends fighting. And he had done all his chogos like clowns. And I think it's been in White Dwarf as well. And I was just like, man, that makes that, me happy. Yeah, that, that's wicked. You know, that's, that's really fun. Um, and it, it was just a beautiful, beautiful painted army. But the sculpts are just so gorgeous. And they, they look quite um, dopey. That's what I like. Yeah. Kind of like, do you know what I mean? They look quite like you could imagine being an idiot. The nice thing with that kit is as well, their noses are all separate. And a lot of yeah. it is a separate, so you can really kind of mishmash them. And if it's mm. a particularly stupid looking nose and a stupid set of ears, you can make them like, you know, yeah, look like a low IQ user. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's so good. So yeah. So what's your top model? Do out of production models count? <laughs> uh, we're gonna go with book only. I'm afraid book only. Oh, disappointing. The Loon Shrine itself. I love the Loon Shrine. It's just such a cool model. Like it just it's just perfect. Like my own one is just I've added little bits of like real life light into it just to add like splashes of colour. It's just cool. It's cool. I think it's an artist's dream, right? Like if you're a painter, mm. it's it's like your perfect dream because I think you can do so many different themes with it. You could paint fifteen of them and each one could have its own character by so many different standards. Oh, 100%. You, you look at... The only other scenery piece that I think that could actually do it to only a small extent would be the the, uh, the Gloomtide shipwreck. Yeah. Because Slaanesh's is quite boring. Sylvaneth is boring. Nurgle's is boring. Um, Corn, that is boring. Who else is there? There's not many... Like, man. Taxman's boring. It's it's massive as well. I just, uh, I just don't want to boring. 
I like the Fire Slayers one. It's cute. Plus, you can if you keep the top, there's a bit in the back, which if uh, you don't fill the hole, you can pour dice through it and it rolls them for you, like a dice tower. No, I, I know, but still, it's a poor <laughs> piece compared to what the Gloom Spot's got because the textures that you can add on to it, yeah. the things you can do. You could make it like a water splash colour effect. You could make it look like a bit of old rock, fresh rock. You could make it look like it's made out of metal. Anything. It, it's well, for so, my one, I did it as like warp stone. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And it's it works stone. really well. Mm. I've seen yellow, I've seen green, I've seen purple, I've seen a bit of everything. And because obviously with the various sub factions, you then theme it, you can have more mushrooms, squigs, spider webs. It's brilliant. It really is a lovely bit of terrain. And it's like it, and it's sizable as well. It's a good size. It's mm. a really good size. Mm. Like the Slanesh piece is the worst size of a model that you could ever imagine. Because you've got this big goat head on a portal. On then it's on a load of treasure. Now, why it was that, I'll never know. Yeah, me, it's, it's a very odd choice. For me, if they were going to do anything and redo the scenery, and I've always said this, is you know, I, I even turn up to tournaments and people are like, oh, you're not playing with a Fane of Slanesh? I'm like, no, because I hate the model. I know it's good, but I hate the model. Um, and that's my personal preference. If you love it, fair enough. I've got no ill will against anyone's opinions. Um, I accept all, but I would have preferred like a like a a like um, oh, what you call what? Do you know what they've got him locked in at the moment? The um, yeah, like a, a like a crystally prism. Yeah, I can't think of the word, but it's a prism. Yeah, that that's what I would have preferred. A so, waystone, like an elven waystone. That's what we yes, want. Yes, that's that's exactly what I want. And that would make sense for you to be able to summon out of because it's Slanesh giving the instructions for it rather than a goat's head portal, you know. Um, mm. You know, so that that was for me. Uh, but my favourite model, and I think this is gonna this is gonna shock you. It's actually the Grots. Yeah, I do like the basic Grots. There's a lot of character to him, especially for like the age of the sculpt. It's so old hammer and so old world. I th and when you look at the new aesthetic, they don't look out of place. They look mm. like they deserve to be there because they look like they've been in this new realm for so long and was in the age of myth. And they've still just sort of been hiding in their caves and they've just come out for a fight. You know, I think the old fanatics the old Fnatic free model kit would have been one that would have been like, if you had to name a box, that would be the one which you would go for in like on that vein, because they had even more character than the basic goblins. Mm. Like that was an astounding kit. I've managed to pick uh, a, a set of three of them up in like a bulk lot recently. And I had a free, I had a couple of them as a kid. And now going back to them and them comparing them to the, the new Fnatics, the new Fnatics are gorgeous, but the old ones are just brilliant. They're just, they're just, they're just right. They're simple. They're not over designed. They're just lovely, and they've got lots of little character and little add-ons as well with the kit. Just little things like a little cauldron or a little snotling. Yeah, see, that's what I like. But my problem with the new fanatics is they're too breakable. They're, 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 they're yeah, not, they're awful. They're awful. Not, they're not built to be sustained unless they're magnetized. Yeah. So that actually brings me on to a good point, what we're going to go on to next, which is we've spoken about the models and we've, we've touched on the rule basis a little bit, but your endless spells. Your endless spells are fun <laughs> and fantastic. We're going to get into, but boy, can you break some of them quite easily because I don't think they're built too well, apart from maybe the spiders, the crawling spiders. Yeah, that's literally because it's just a sculpted base. It's like the Vermintide base for Skaven. Mm -hmm. And the other stuff, I, 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 it makes me worried. I think, oh, that, that could be quite a weak joint. You know, it's as bad as... Our... Mm, like, the only one which ever gives me real worry is the big mushroom, simply because it's quite hollow. And the walls of it aren't that thick, so I'd feel that if you say something dropped on it, a bit of a snap. 
hundred percent. Yeah, but let's talk about your rules, and we're going to start off with that big mushroom because I think that's a really nice, nice <laughs> yeah, cool middle, spell. and the end of the spell is fantastic. So do you yeah. want to take that away? Uh, basically, you roll. I think it's eight d six. That's how far you can throw it. Um, it lands and is placed for a turn. And then after one turn, it starts spewing out poison gas, which is everything within range of it. For each model, you roll dice, four up, take mortal wound. Simple, brilliant for locking off objectives. Just, just cool. It's quite expensive in points. I think it's about 90 now after the most mm. recent general sandbook. Okay. And now your spiders. Spiders are also brilliant. Uh, they have a large base which has to be summoned from a, a piece of terrain. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a quite a decent move. If they move over a unit, you roll six dice, five ups, cause mortals. If a unit finishes their move within range of it, uh, they've got a roll to take mortals again. Mm-hmm. And in addition, at the start of the turn, start in range of it, take mortals. It's just very nice chip damage in a way of locking off areas. But the cool thing about it is it doesn't affect spider fan model, spider fang models. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, do I, and your final one? No, I got two. Have you I thought you there was three in the box. Four spells. Is it say four? Yeah. There's the scuttle cauldron, which is pretty simple. You cast it, it allows you to know all the spells in your law. I just want to apologise about my hand there again because I'm getting notifications left, right, and centre here about actually some quite big news that we want to talk to you about once we're off camera. Actually, this is actually oh, you're, you're going to like this. It's Warhammer no, related. I'm scared. I can't. I can't talk about my inside sources. Um, that's just an interesting little message I just got. Okay, so you're saying so the cauldron it allows you to know all the spells in the law once you cast it, but mm. you, even, you it causes D3 wounds a turn to yourself one of your units, or if you're in range, an enemy unit. And the last one, which is the moon, it's just a blasty, just a blasty spell. Uh, it does mortal wounds, and it gives you a bonus to battle shock. <coughs> okay. It's my least favourite. Yeah. No, I understand that. Well, I think we've covered quite a bit here, and I think we've, we've, uh, we've spoke quite a lot about some stuff. And we've now covered two books in quite quick concession. We've done Night Horn, we've done Gloom Spite. And leading up to Christmas, I think what we're going to obviously discuss will be, we'll, we'll have a talk after this actually about the next event, the next book we will cover. But what I want to do is I want to talk about, I, I call it Fake Hammer. Models that give you a fake sense of hope and then <laughs> use this model in the game. Okay. Yeah. And I want to yeah, I I run through it, and we're going to make it quite a long video. Okay. And it's going to be close to two hours because there's a lot of models in this range. So I want you tonight to start writing out your list, and I'm going to write out my every side of my list because I've got models that I thought were going to be amazing. I've spent over £100 on, and boy, do they suck. All right. <laughs> They're worst. <laughs> They're not really worth taking in your RP, but they're beautiful to paint. They're fun to yeah. paint, and that's the joy of having them. But there's just some models. And I'll give you a, an, an idea. Archeon. Molog. Right. <laughs> right, so th- this is what I'm saying. So we're going to do a fake hammer episode of where it's just, it's fake, it's fake news, man. It don't believe the hype. We want to teach you why, well, not teach you, but tell you why it, it's a trap. Okay? So. And that's what we're, we're going to talk about. So hopefully we'll be able to talk about this next, well, this coming Sunday. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we're looking to do. So I hope everyone's enjoyed this episode. Hopefully we'll see you again. And next episode you'll see from us will be Fake Hammer. And we're going to be talking about things that you thought was going to be a good purchase. But really, the only thing it's good for is painting. And if you're a painter, then you should definitely buy it. But if you're a gamer, mm-hmm. don't you touch need it. To save your, you need to save your pennies. Okay? So that's what we're here to do. We're here to help some people. And if you've got a different thought process, if you disagree with us, tell us in the comments. Yeah? So just put it in the comments below. We want to hear everyone's opinion because we appreciate everyone's opinion. We're not downright out. You know, we're not always right. We will say some things that are wrong. 
in your opinion, and we respect that. So we want to hear your opinions and your thoughts. So give us a thumbs up, a like, subscribe if you want to. We're not that pushy channel that tells you you have to, um, but we want to hear your comments. How much you play Silver Ness? No, no, even if you play Silver Ness. Don't like it, man. Trees, don't trust them. (sighs) Okay, well, we can get get into that in Fake Hammer. Okay? So, thank you so much once again, and we'll speak soon. All right, do that. Do those.